authority is delegated power. You better catch that. See, authority is delegated power. So now, the depth of your authority is directly related to your power source. Now, my children, they'll, they'll come ask me something or they'll come tell on each other and I'll come and say, Daddy, Julia's doing such and such. I said, well, hey, you go tell Julia. I said, she walking up, hey, Julia, Daddy said you, you know, and, and, and when she say Daddy said, Julia knows to settle down and listen because she know don't take my name in vain. Don't say Daddy said it if Daddy didn't say it. Now, now, now the children have enough sense to listen to the younger child, the older child listen to the younger child because the younger child said, Daddy said so. Well, how do you think it works in the spirit? When the believer go and face life's challenges and say, Daddy said over there in Philippians that he shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory. Now you get out of the way, Dad. You, you get out the way, bad credit. You, you get out the way, lack. I am walking in abundance because daddy said he has provided all things for me. Yes, Y'all remember some yes, but, but you got to walk in that authority, which is delegated power. Power is dunamis. So, so I called him Simon. Uh, I called him Peter. And the name is Simon. He changes his name, wraps it around Peter, sizes it in a different way. And I don't have time to define the, the depth of what Peter meant. But I want you to understand what God has for you, your earthly tabernacle can't even contain it. You can't contain what God has for you. It's bigger than you. Now, here's a quick checklist to decide whether or not you're doing what God told you to do. Number one. If you're, doing, if you're doing a thing and you have enough money to do it, maybe he didn't tell you to do it. See, God tells us to do things that will cause us to be completely and totally dependent on him. That ain't matter. See, some people give based on their budget. They've, they, they put 5% to this, 3% to this. Well, what if the Holy Spirit said, give them something, what you gonna do? It ain't in my budget. See, God is a budget buster. Yes, sir. On the one hand, in my Simon mind, if I had half of the money I gave away, I'd be a rich man right now. You better hear it. In my Simon uh, mind, not my Peter mind, and my psalm in mind, if I just kept all the money that I've given away in my life, if I wouldn't have helped some folk. Have you ever helped some folk and it turned out bad for you? Come on, somebody. You know, you're trying to be good to them, trying to help them, and they tear your house down. You let them move in with you, and when they move out, boy, they didn't tear your house down. And then it's just me again, huh? That will tear your house down. And so in our Simon mind, we say, I shouldn't have done that. But in that Peter mind, yes. you, you say, well, the word will not return void. It, it would accomplish what he told me to accomplish. Now over there in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, it said give comma. It didn't add anything else to it. He told me to give and it shall be Lord, I'm expecting you to move in my situation. Lord, I know I, I gave $50 last week, but if you don't mind, I need to make a withdrawal of some healing on this back pain today if you don't mind. See, see, what you deposit in is faith, not money, not time, not talent. Those are just things that represent the faith on display. You deposit in faith and you make a withdrawal out in faith. In faith, come on somebody. Money is the medium of exchange in the natural. Faith is the medium of exchange in the... Oh, come on somebody. So, so he has given us authority. 
It talks about Peter here. Now, I'm going quickly to 19. No, wait, let me say this in 18. Look at it. I will build my church. Watch this now. Come on now. Well, watch this now. Take notes if you're taking it real good. The church is not simply a gathering of people. Well, to be factual, it's never a gathering of people. It's a gathering of baptized believers. So even when we start talking about the assembly of the church, the assembly of the church is not a crowd. Some of the largest churches in the nation, and this is my opinion, you don't like it, send me an email. Hey, look, there's some of the largest churches in the nation are just gatherings. You better catch that, somebody. Huh. You know, when I first heard T.D. Jakes back in, might have been 1990, old fat preacher, and somebody called me and said, hey, come, come on, hear this preacher. And I went and heard this preacher, and I remember there was something over him. Well, but 150 people in there, y'all better hear me somebody, talk to me somebody. 150 people in there, maybe. And most of them were church folk of that church. The drawing power was called nobody. Y'all better hear this, somebody. I went in there and I heard this man preach. And it was good. I heard an anointing there. But if I looked in my human eyes, if I looked in my psalm and mind, it wasn't much. It wasn't that tough. Wasn't nobody really there. It wasn't that cold. There was no marketing and promotion. There was just somebody who told me to come check this preach out. What I'm trying to get you to understand is the church is not in the crowd. The large gathering is not the church. Man, I might preach this here and going on home on this one. I want you to get this thing. The church is not the number of people. The church is the body of Christ who have committed to him and who've been baptized. And I mean by the Spirit. 